Welcome back. Welcome back. You're listening to Whistle Wednesdays here on AM 1170. The answer. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with Whistle Realty, joined as always by Mr. Jason Hall with Team Home Loans and Synergy One Lending. David Troezy, audio video, San Diego. And before the break, we're talking with Lawrence Mudgett with Safer Law, tenant landlord specialist, attorney. He's got You're too the man. Much, man. Father of two baby girls. I love it. So if you want to connect with anybody who's here on the show today, have any questions, you can always call or text us 619-663-SELL, 619-663-7355. So we talked about the squatter situation and how big of a nightmare that can be. What's another situation you're seeing a lot of right now, Lawrence? The main phone call I get that leads to difficult trials and situations for landlords are habitability issues. Um, A lot of people hear that. They don't necessarily understand what that is in the landlord-tenant context. In summary, the case law has defined it as the landlord has to maintain the property in a condition that is fit for human habitation. So what exactly does that mean? Yeah, what's the definition of that? There's no hard and fast rules. And that part of the problem is how much discretion the judges have. There's no cheat sheet. You know, a busted sink is 5%. This is 20%. Um, And the way it works is in practice is the judge will assign some sort of corresponding percentage uh, to to the condition of the property. So if if it's really bad, he may say, okay, it's only 50% habitable. You're at trial. Let's just say rents a thousand bucks a month. It's been six months. Okay, six months. So that's six thousand dollars. If he said fifty wow. percent habitable, the tenant then has five days to pay you half, to pay you that fifty percent on the total amount. If they do that, they are prevailing party. The lease is reinstated at the reduced level, and uh, you better hope there's not an attorney's fees clause in the lease because if they've got a savvy tenants lawyer, they're going to jack you up for at least ten grand in attorney's fees on a wow. six month. Absolutely. So they so, didn't pay you for six months. Now they only pay you half. You may have to pay their attorney, and they can extend the lease at the reduced price until the seller or the, in this case, the owner brings up the property up to you know what, exactly. the, what the judge feels is. You know, and what are you going to do when you have a hostile tenant that won't even let you in the house? So then you got to go back to court to try to get a court order forcing you to let them come in to spray for roaches or fix whatever the problem is. Kyle, I know this is a real estate radio show, but this scares me about buying more investment property with you, Kyle. Stuff like this, this and I know you've done this, and you, you're an expert at it. And you've helped a lot of clients do it. But what do you what do you tell somebody who's thinking right now as they're driving around heading out to mom's house for you know Thanksgiving tomorrow? What do you tell somebody so that they're not scared? To purchase investment property. This is the exact reason why I hire a property manager and I don't do this stuff myself because somebody has to have intimate knowledge of all these rules and you know potential scenarios that are out there so that they can avoid them. I think it's a huge mistake for people to manage their own property. Agreed. Because one, the time, people don't realize the amount of time that's involved in managing your own property. When you get that phone call of, you know, my toilet's overflowing. Okay, well, you don't really know how bad it is, and people don't exactly. And you think you're going to save eighty clearly. bucks or a hundred dollars a month by not right. having a property manager? Yeah. And one call, they're wasting your eighty, hundred bucks. Yeah. But we also agree that the easiest way for us as average folk to build net worth is to buy rental property, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's a necessity, and I understand you know these laws as good as anybody out there, but I still make the choice to hire somebody. And another one of the other big reasons we've had Terrence Cochran with Elite Real Estate San Diego. He manages almost all my properties. He's awesome. Um, the other thing is you cannot manage property and have a heart. Yeah. I would show That's up right now. That's the hardest now. part, especially yeah. when it comes to tenant landlord stuff, because you know when that tenant doesn't pay their rent on time. It's so easy for them to tell you this story. I just got laid off or, you know, I've been sick or whatever the case may be. And you don't serve them that notice at the earliest possible opportunity. Their kids are sitting there. Their their kids are sitting there. They haven't haven't eaten a week. I'd reach in, take the thousand dollars out in my pocket and I'd be, hey, don't worry about this month's rent. Here's some money for the kids. Go take care of them. I'd feel bad because that's the kind of guy I am. And that's, and that's what happens when you manage yeah, property that's yourself. That's why I don't manage. That's why when I pay a property manager, they I pay them to be heartless. And that, <laughs> I mean, that sounds terrible, but you've got to run your rental properties like, like you business. run a business. And I think, Man. Uh, sorry to interrupt, I think you're spot on here with your take. And also, I mean, look how passionate we are just talking about these concepts that uh, to other people. It's not even happening to us. So when a landlord is managing the property that he owns and he hasn't been paid rent in six months and he's going through all this, 
I mean, they're emotional. I mean, it might as well be a family law case. They're they're really hyped up and upset. And I'd also like to add a property manager, great idea. Vet your tenants. Know who you're renting to. If there's something on their record, you know. Now, make, when you say vet, we've talked about no Facebook. Should you look at their Facebook? What you, type of parties they run? I mean, you're yeah. thinking about Go- this, Google right? Google them, Facebook. The main thing is the credit report and running a case search. If you see their name on a prior unlawful detainer. Run. 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 You know, and that's pretty heartless. They may have a valid reason, may have been an unfair landlord. But still, they're willing to go to court. So let's talk about court. Since you go to court, you're in your suit and tie. I know that happens often for you. We talked about emotions. What's the craziest, without mentioning names, can you share with us as we're driving around listening right now, like things you've seen happen, like renters yelling at landlords, landlords yelling at renters? Sure. I mean, I've, I've... dealt with some some horror stories. Uh, I, I can relay one to you that this wasn't my case. This was just told to me by a fellow attorney. We were chatting in the hall. Um, a tenant pled habitability. I believe the property was in uh, Ramona or somewhere out in the East County. There was a problem with mice. And the guy uh, caught them, froze them, and managed to bring a big uh, box of dead frozen mice into the courtroom. And yeah, the like, judge like we're was both pretty know, unhappy about Yeah, like, that. like yeah, for sure these came here. I didn't just pick these up at the uh, well, of store <laughs> to feed my, uh, you know, snake or something. That's crazy. That wow. is crazy. It, it it really is. That that's pretty uncommon. You know, I I just went on a site inspection the other day on this alleged slumlord thing, and uh, I mean, you should have seen the roach trap that they pulled out from under the couch. It was like a petri dish of a Roaches. thousand. It was disgusting. Wow. How do people know? live like that though? I just don't get it. I'd... But they, these people had had a tenant's attorney prior who's advised them, you know, they're not letting the landlord come in to spray. They, they, they're they sympathetic. They had five or six kids and another on the way, you know. So it's it's very hard in cases like those to convince the judge, you know, you need to throw these people out. They're pretty much going to look for any reason not to. So you have to be really, really careful about how you go. Yeah, we always things. hear that most of the judges, again, we're on the left coast. A lot of the judge are, you know, for the renters. Is that your, you know, take? Is you see that? Do they a lot of times fill for these, you know, people in this situation? And, I, and we, the rich people who might own one or ten rental properties, are the bad guys? I think it can happen. Um, the the key is if you can go in on an eviction. Basically, you want it to be about money. You know, if you can limit it to, hey, it's 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 non-payment of rent or there's been a 30, 60 day notice served because we're not going to renew and just really narrow the issues down. Um, I, I, I don't think the judges really lean one way or the other. They just want to see that you're following the process. So, you know, they don't get in trouble for for granting uh, a lockout on someone. OK. And do you represent both sides? I do. So you're willing to help. The renter, you're willing to help the landlord. Yes. And I'm very realistic with my tenant clients. Um, I, I don't make false promises. I, I'm not one of these guys who tries to, you know, catch people in these attorney's fees motions. I, I work on volume. Um, usually my tenants pretty much all have the same concern, which is they want to get out without the judgment on their record. And they need a little more time. And usually if you approach the landlord or landlord's counsel with, hey, you know, we can agree to this move out date you know, this payment plan or a waiver or something on the back rent, they're getting possession. Oh, and by the way, if they don't do that, go ahead and set up your lockout because the day after the the move out day, if they're still there, they're going to get locked down anyway. Most people go for that. Sometimes you'll have landlords who get real personal and I don't mind taking the gloves off in those kind of cases, but that's definitely not the average case. And where's your office at if a client wanted to come see you? Kyle's building, second floor. All right, and how do I contact you or find your website? What's the best way? Saferlaw.com, uh, Lawrence at Saferlaw. Call me at 619-794-0460. You can text me at that number. Um, I, tr- I try to make myself as available as possible with the twins, and, you know, being a lawyer, it doesn't always work, but uh, I do my but you're best. you're still working 60 hours a week. I know you are. Of course, of course. Yeah. Probably more if you count family. If you count the babies, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, well, that 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 is a tougher job than any of us have to do here in the studio what our wives have done with our children with soon to be your child yours and Brittany's, and dave's already his wife's already been doing it and what she's got coming um it's the toughest job i mean i'd rather be attorney audio video guy a real estate broker a real estate lender 
over raising a child. That is a very difficult job. It's a lovely job, but it is a tough, tough job. And enough women do not get... I'm trying to say this right, Kyle. They don't get the credit they're due. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll Thank help you out there because you butcher you. it, I'm sure. I always <laughs> butcher it. Hey, Paul, that they're movie praise, you were saying praise. was Pacific Heights. Paul, you there? Yes. All right, so Pacific it- Heights was that movie, 1989, like, that came uh, 1990. out. 1990. 1990, see? I'm old school. I remember all that stuff. I say we had Michael Keaton. He was living downstairs. He put roaches in the apartment. So that Matt Modine yeah. and Melanie. Melody Griffith. Melody Griffith. Griffith Matt yeah. Modine, yeah. Stars. Those were the three stars. It was a great movie. If yeah. you want to watch it, Watch on Netflix, get it online, Pacific Heights, you know, kind of gives you a wake-up yeah, call. it's a good movie to watch on your brand new 4K TV oh, from Old Dave Show Easy here. Eh? There you go. Yes, I like the 4K. I got to get rid of that YouTube, uh, or what do I have? I don't have a YouTube. I guess there's YouTube. What were you we talking about? Tube TV. Tube TV. Yeah, you have one of those TVs with a big box behind it still, right? I watch TV here on my Note 5. That's what I watch. I love it. So just want to thank everybody for listening to the show today. Our special Thanksgiving Black Friday edition here of Whistle Wednesdays. If you want to connect with any of the guests we had on the show today, you can always call us, text us, 619-663-SELL, 619-663-7355. Thank you so much for joining us here on Whistle Wednesdays. We start real slow. You just